How's it going guys? Andy here and welcome back to another video. I've just been thinking about the last video I did and last week we were talking about humidity trays. I showed you how to make a cheap and easy humidity tray for your houseplants and I talked a little bit about misting your houseplants and uh, I said that humidity trays would be better than misting and I still think that's the case but I thought it might be an interesting experiment to go ahead and really test the difference because I remembered as you can see behind me I've got um, a really old and a bit knackered but still perfectly working um, digital thermometer and that has a relative humidity um, readout on it and I keep that hanging around um, in different rooms just to keep an eye on the humidity make sure everything's okay um, as you can see here um, on by default I'm getting about 55% humidity if I don't do anything extra to my plants which isn't too bad for the winter I think they do reasonably well with that anyway but I thought um, let's do a bit of an experiment here I'm going to spray the plants and then see what that does to the humidity and for how long that affects the humidity and then we're going to do the same again and put the, the meter next to the um, humidity trays and see what that does to the humidity and for how long and that way we'll get a better slightly scientific idea but not really um, of actually which is better and how long it lasts and uh, and really get a good picture of what you can do to affect the humidity in your home so that's what i thought i'd do for this one it might be a bit of fun just to have a bit of a mess around and experiment and see what we can find out so to begin with what i'm going to do i've got a calathea freddy here i actually bought it thinking it was some sort of mini variety of calathea it was just a baby one because <laughs> it's grown a lot bigger uh, um, probably three times the size since i bought it but it cost me like one pound fifty from a garden center i think i'm really pleased with it it's a beautiful plant and i saw one at a garden center the other day and it was huge so i guess i'm looking forward to little freddy becoming big freddy in the future but uh, let's use freddy as an example to bit to begin with i'm gonna spray uh, spray it down with the mister there and um and then just leave the uh, leave the meter next to it and see what sort of humidity it records and uh, and for how long and I'll pay attention uh, as it when it comes back down uh, to like the baseline which is 55% have we got that right now yeah I thought I better check that's what it usually is at <laughs> I'd look pretty silly if it was saying something else behind me it's saying 55% now it usually does and so uh, yeah we'll see if it uh, it raises it and then I'll keep an eye on it and I'll let you know uh, what changes after we after we spray it. All right, let's get started. OK, as you can see here, we have my Calathea Freddy and on the meter here, the baseline is 55 percent relative humidity. It's 20.5 degrees and it's 11.05 in the morning. Well, actually, it says PM on there. This is a very old and very knackered meter but it does a job for me. So let's move that out of the way while we spray it and we'll see what happens, shall we? So just a spritz and what I always like to do to just give it a bit on the surface of the, the pot there because that just damps it down and that's more surface area for the water to evaporate from. So. Uh, I think it will last a lot longer if you do that compared to just hitting the leaves. OK, so Freddy is well and truly sprayed and misted now. So I'm just going to move him over there to the side. We will put the little meter back there next to him. And we'll give him a minute to uh, start evaporating and appreciating the difference in the environment. And I will let you know very shortly what difference we get. Alrighty, time for a little update. As you can see, it's about 30, 30 minutes later, 35 minutes. You can see on the surface of the leaves here, there is still moisture present. It hasn't completely evaporated, but I'd say it definitely has started to. And the outer leaves there, it's drying out. But in terms of humidity, we're up to 58% humidity. Um, interestingly, dropped a little bit of uh, 
heat. I've been in and out of the room a few times and the heat in it actually is not at the moment. But that's beside the point. I said it's not particularly scientific, but as you can see, uh, the humidity has risen in the general area of the plant um, in 35 minutes and we will keep an eye on it and I'll get back to you again and see what it's doing in a, another half an hour or so. Okay, so moving on just a little over another hour. Um, since then, it's uh, got dark and the central heating has come on. So in terms of humidity, it's actually dropped lower than it was during the day. So we're now at 53%. And as you can see, uh, the plant is back to being dry and the humidity level um, is actually lower because the heating's on. But certainly there is no longer any benefits from the spraying of the humidity. Now, if I did it again, that would then come back up. So really in an hour and a half, the humidity has gone up and back down again from the misting. So that's pretty much what you can expect if you mist your plant. It's useful, it does affect the humidity, it is gonna help the plant, but on a relatively isolated and short-term basis. Now, if you have time to mist your plant every hour that you are awake and then get up every hour to um, mist it at night, then you're a better person than I am. Obviously, that isn't going to help. So you can, if you did it once a day, give it some temporary humidity of which it would appreciate. Now, I'm going to stick my neck out here and say a humidity tray is going to do the same thing, but I think it's going to do it over a longer period of time. The water, there's much more water involved and it's going to evaporate a lot slower. So I'm going to guess that you're going to have a raised humidity for a much longer period of time. So let's give that a little test and we'll see if we're right. All right, so let's try the experiment again with the humidity tray this time. Now, I've let this tray dry out as much as I can over the last 24 hours. I haven't topped it up. It's not completely dry, uh, which is probably why we're getting a reading of 51% at the moment, which is a little bit higher than normal. But um, as a baseline, we'll leave it there. It's nearly, it's nearly dry. It's nearly touched dry. So what I'm going to do now is top it back up again so there's plenty of water um, I bring it up just just before the actual uh, line of the gravel so the pot isn't actually wet but the gravel is and then we'll come back and see how that makes a difference and for how long. So according to my incorrect clock it's 647 so we'll use that as a baseline. I'll top it up with some water and we'll see how we get on. Okay, so that's the humidity tray primed with water. Let's call it 650 and 51% humidity. Let's see what happens. Okay, so we're about an hour further on. What does the time say? 7.45, I think it was 6.50. So yeah, 55 minutes, about an hour. And we're up to 54% relative humidity now. So it's been steadily going up. Um, I don't know how much the temperature will make a difference. It is sort of during the day and there's no heating on at the moment and in this room it's a spare room uh, we're down to 18.7 degrees which is a little bit lower than normal sort of uh, living temperature it's a little bit chilly but um i don't know if that will affect the humidity at all but we'll wait and see i've got to go out now so uh, i'll be a few hours and then we'll see uh, what it's like when i come back okay stay tuned Okay, so we're fast forwarding into the evening now. The central heating has come back on, which does tend to dry out the air a little bit. But uh, as you can see here, uh, quite a few hours on. So six hours later, we're back down to 55%, which is still an elevated humidity level from where we started. So I think it's fair to say that this tray has kept an elevated humidity level throughout the day. So compared to misting a plant, which may last a few hours, two to three hours, maybe maximum, the humidity tray, there's a reasonable chance, at least an elevated amount, whether that's two, three, four, five, six percent 
um, depending on the other atmospherics and conditions and temperatures, etc., etc., it will elevate the humidity around the plant for a longer period of time. I think that's a fair conclusion to this test. At different times of year, with different ambient humidity levels, this will all change. But I think it's fair to say that a humidity tray like this, if regularly topped up, probably once a day or once every other day, you can probably get away. If you've got a deep tray and you put a lot of water in here, um, then that will probably last longer. If you've got a really big tray, if you've got a big pot with a massive drip tray and you fill that up and there's a lot of volume, you can probably get away with two, three, four days um, before it all evaporates. So it all depends on the size, I guess. But I think it's a fair thing to say that it certainly does help with elevated humidity levels throughout the day. So if you want the best for your plant or you've got a particularly fussy plant like these calatheas, then a drip tray or something like that will help. Obviously, there are further steps. You can get a humidifier machine and set that up, pointing it around your plants and have that on a timer going off, um, you know, every hour or, or even, you know, all day if you want. Um, but then obviously you have to deal with a machine in your house and you're going to get one for every room or you're going to get all your plants in one place. It's not uh, the most practical thing for a lot of people. It's potentially unsightly and difficult to do. So everyone has their own requirements and uh, their own suitability, but certainly a small uh, cheap tray like this will give you some extra humidity, not as much as a humidifying machine, obviously, but um, let's see how this Calathea gets on. So far, we've got no real browning. We did have a few brown leaves, but that was because I forgot to water it. Since then, it's been fine. As you can see, it's perked up and it's quite happy. So, so far, so good. I'll keep you posted, but um, certainly um, I think for this plant at the moment, the humidity is enough. All right, guys, I hope you found that very unscientific experiment interesting or useful. We'll see how it all pans out, but uh, that's it for this one for now. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you very soon on the very next video. Bye for now.